Now, how do you create your own country? Does it need a population, defined territory, and a functioning government? Or can you just simply do it by planting your own flag somewhere that no one else has? That's just what an American, Jeremiah Heaton, did last year when his six-year-old daughter asked him if she could become a princess. Well, flying from his home in Virginia to an area between Egypt and Sudan, he founded his new nation, North Sudan. There's to be a Disney movie of that story, but will anyone recognize his country? And doesn't it all just smack a little bit of colonialism? Well, Jeremiah Heaton joins us now from our studios in Washington. Uh, thank you so much for being with us here on Global. Now, most dads, when their daughter asks to be a princess, gets them, uh, I don't know, a sparkly outfit. Why have you done this? Well, it was a very uh, you know, tender moment between a father and a daughter when she asked if she could be a real princess. And, you know, if she had asked to be a doctor or a lawyer, I most certainly would have told her yes. And in that moment, I told her that she could be a princess in the same vein you would tell a child they could be anything that they wanted to be. And I didn't want to, uh, to tell her something that would dash her hopes. So you didn't want to disappoint her. But before we go on, it's worth me showing viewers exactly where you have made this state. We've got a, a map that we can show. And uh, this is you planting that flag in an area between Egypt and Sudan. Uh, and just to actually take people through it, because Egypt claims a border between the two countries. It's this yellow line that will come up on the screen. There it is. That's what Egypt claimed. Now, Sudan actually claim a different way the border goes. Now, both of those countries are really interested in that pocket on the right, but it leaves that little area, there you go, in purple, unclaimed, and that's what Jeremiah has actually claimed as his own. Now, now how on earth did you go about even finding that place, let alone doing it? Well, I spent an extensive amount of time researching the matter and came across a Latin term called terra nullius, which means land belonging to no one. And uh, in searching that term, I identified the bird to will region as uh, you know, being applicable to it. And so I decided to, uh, to see from a legal standpoint if my assumption was correct. And I consulted a few lawyers who were experts in that and said that it indeed was land uh, that was not governed in any way. And in further research, I identified that the area had absolutely zero population due to the remote nature uh, and uh, it being a, along the Egyptian and Sudanese borders. We so, just saw you. We just saw uh, you, you know, planting. We just saw you planting the flag. We're now seeing a picture of uh, you, your daughter, and the flag. Uh, does she use her title, by the way? Well, uh, all this started with just one Facebook post. We've not reached out to the media in any way. It, uh, the Facebook post went viral uh, back in the summer, and it went around. And in, in, in that Facebook post. Uh, in a very loving way, I asked family and friends to, to address Emily as Princess Emily when they see her. And so they do that, and she giggles a little, but that's, uh, that's the extent of it. She's still very much a seven-year-old little girl, and I think that years down the road that she'll be able to reflect on what I've done and, and, and really have heartwarming memories of it. Uh, you may have heard me mention it in the introduction, just the, the notion of an American going to Africa putting his flag down and claiming it his own, I mean, it does smack of colonialism, doesn't it? Well, you know, if you look at the term and really explore what colonialism is, you know, that has been one of the things that has been posed to me. Uh, doesn't it uh, not sit well in one, uh, you know, in, in that lens? And the reality is, is that, you know, I, I grew up in a very diverse portion of America. I went to school with people who had immigrated from Southeast Asia. Uh, people who had immigrated from Mexico and, and I went to school and I'm very fortunate to have never viewed the world through any type of racial lens and it was very upsetting to me to think that when people were trying to uh, pigeonhole this claim as some sort of a racial dynamic to it you know I'm one human being and our goals for the nation is to help develop agricultural technologies that will help feed other human beings. And I think you have to be very dismissive of people who try to okay. look through a racial lens for what I'm trying to do. Uh, Jeremiah, I'll be back to you in a moment because you're in the process of doing this. Uh, one man who can actually give Jeremiah some tips on running his own country is Michael Bates, uh, whose family claimed a British Second World War fortress in the North Sea and claimed it as their own back in uh, 1967. It's called Sealand. We'll come to you, Michael, in a moment or two.
two, but I'm just going to show viewers uh, your state. It's out there in the North Sea. It's uh, off the southeast coast of Suffolk. It is sea land. It's this fort that uh, was originally built for the Second World War. We'll show pictures uh, of that in a moment or two. But, Michael, just tell us a little more about how your families claimed this. Uh, it was back in 1967. Um, my, my, my previous, my father had been in, uh, involved in a, in a phenomenon called pirate radio, and um, the government brought in legislation to close the station down. These were broadcasting from forts, different forts out in the estuary. Uh, he moved this further jurisdiction, which was then called Rough Towers. But before putting the station back on there, he had the bizarre idea of declaring independence. Um, hard fought over the years, but... Uh, it it has been ago. hard fought. We're showing pictures of it now. I mean, you've had disputes with uh, the British Navy. Am I right in saying that shots were fired? Oh, shots have been fired on numerous occasions, yes. Um, there were standoffs with the British Navy back in the 60s. Harold Wilson was in power at the time. Uh, the government decided that they couldn't have a Cuba off the east coast of England and they needed to invade, but Harold Wilson put his foot down and said that... Uh, he could not have any members of the services harmed or, or injured or, or the Bates family. So, being a proper old gentleman, uh, uh, they step back. I don't know whether Jeremiah is going to have this, quite so, so much understanding. Well, I'll, I'll come back to him in a minute, but you said it was uh, long fought over because it ended up in the courts, but also you were invaded back in 1978. Tell me about that. Uh, we were invaded by some uh, what were initially business associates of ours. Um, I was on sea land on my own. Uh, these guys came out in a helicopter. I was held prison out there for about four days, I think it was, and kidnapped, taken on a trawler back to Holland, landed illegally, and then we returned in a helicopter and slid down ropes onto the top. So it's been quite an exciting time. In the end, you retook it, you took them prisoner. I'll come back to that thought in a moment. Uh, but uh, are those two right uh, on this whole idea of setting up a country? Let's throw it around a little more because in the studio here, uh, Dr. Ralph Wilde, who's a reader in international law at University College London, and also the international branding expert, Rita Clifton. Thanks to you both. Uh, to you, Ralph, first of all. I mean, you, you heard this term, uh, terra nullius, uh, used there in, uh, a little earlier by Jeremiah. J just tell us what that actually is, because I'd not heard of it before. Yeah, so uh, in international law, uh, terra nullius uh, is a term referring to a territory uh, that does not form within uh, the sovereignty uh, of uh, an existing state uh, and is not claimed. Uh, by a state with a valid claim uh, in international law. But, but it might be Sudanese, it might be Indeed. Egyptian, it's but not, can it's it far ever be Jeremiah? It's far from clear that this is terra nullius under that definition. Right. And uh, so that is very much a disputed question. And in your introduction, I think it's slightly misleading to say that neither state uh, currently claimed that area. Uh, but even if they didn't assert a claim at the moment, it doesn't mean that necessarily it doesn't form within the territory of one or the other based on earlier arrangements. And that seems uh, to me much more likely looking back at some of the earlier international agreements that set up that boundary between the two states uh, on the 22nd uh, parallel. So it's really important how other countries view it and, and their judgment. Uh, Rita, in terms of any sort of branding, whether it's a brand or even a country, what is the critical thing to actually establish? Hmm. Well, first and foremost, I mean, a great brand of any kind, whether it's commercial or it's a nation brand or whatever, has to have a very good story. And clearly, this is a fantastic story. It's a Disney fairy tale. And you've got great stories at the heart of brands like Google, you know, with two boys in a bedroom, Apple and so on. However, if you're going to be any kind of brand in any sector, nation or otherwise, uh, you've also got to have a really le legitimate base and a secure base because people have got to be sure you're going to be, the be there tomorrow. So now, legitimacy, that is the key. Legitimacy is very, very so, important. So, so, so both of these examples, they have to absolutely establish it is their state and is recognised as their state before they can make progress. Is that and right? It, and it's going to have some kind of basis for future. And I think that, you know, having an English eccentric in the middle of the North Sea <laughs> is one thing, but having an American in the Middle East, I'm afraid, is quite another. Uh, a tougher call. Jeremiah, mm. let me bring you back in. Uh, what, what do you actually plan to do with this land? Well, really the Burt Will region, which is now North Sudan, has a tremendous amount of potential. And what we intend to do is to take all the interests that we have in the nation 
and direct that towards something that is very important, and that's feeding the people of this earth. And I, I would like to use North Sudan as an international center where we can work to develop agricultural technologies for overcoming climate change that we have. And that's something that's extremely exciting about the opportunity that we have there is that we can make this a test bed and, and, and a collaborative effort between uh, scientists all over the world. And my goal is to take the interest that I have and to uh, monetize that and provide the funds that are generated from, from the people's interest in North Sudan and provide that with, to scientists who can develop the technologies that we so desperately need here on Earth. Uh, Ralph, is that uh, having a plan? Do you need to be a state? Well, Do you have to have a population? Is there a certain size? Does, does any of it uh, everything make traction? Said that none of that requires uh, uh, this to be a state. Uh, one could work with the existing uh, 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 people in the area, uh, the neighboring states, uh, and assist them in doing that. You, uh, uh, it's, it's separate statehood for this territory is not required to achieve those objectives. And I think the problem would be, because that statehood would not be recognized by uh, other states, actually it may end up not working precisely because it wouldn't be regarded legally as a state and therefore would not be able to function on the basis of uh, legitimate entitlements to work in that area. I mentioned titles, Princess King. Let me bring uh, Michael back in because you at Sealand sell titles. Just take me through what you sell, how much people would have to pay. Well, we, uh, we, we, to support our cause, we market titles of nobility, which is uh, what the 13th century kings used to do to, to finance their, their military campaigns abroad. Um, there's a list of things on our website, uh, sealandgov.org. There's a there's a shop there with all different things on. But it's a it's a it's a you know pe that we have an awful lot of uh, followers around the world, and um, an awful lot of people apply for these titles, which is great. It helps us pay for food and fuel, and uh, you know we we don't have uh, much of an economy apart from this, so it's it's been really helpful. Uh, Rita Brickley, uh, I mean, in terms of titles, I think you can be a count, you can be a lord. There's various price shopping lists as you would expect. I mean, isn't that classic branding, selling things like that? Yes, I mean, there are lots of interesting branding things going on here. On the other hand, you know, it's a very, very competitive world out there. I mean, it's very interesting to hear about the vision for this new country. But in that competitive world, there are, say, 190 countries around the world. They're all competing for inward investment. They're competing for students. You know, they're also competing uh, for business. And so, therefore, you've got to have a very, very clear point of view about how you're different. But, of course, you have absolutely got to make sure that you've got a sustainable future. Okay. Brief final word from both of you. It really has to be one sentence. Jeremiah, first of all, what have people made of all of this, uh, what you're doing? Do they think it's sweet or rather spoilt? People appreciate the love and can see the vision for the future of North Sudan, and that's why it'll be supported. And, Michael, a sentence from you. I mean, we show the, the fort, but, I mean, why bother? I'm absolutely puzzled, baffled, when you look at this outcrop, why you'd want to call that a state. Well, fourth generation, we can't leave it go. Our flag was even the, taken to the top of Everest, Mount Everest, uh, a little while ago. I mean, some countries have never even achieved that thing, so the whole thing just, uh, just carries on. Well, there we have to leave it. Michael, Jeremiah, thanks to you, and uh, Ralph and Rita here in the studio, thanks very much for your thoughts on this subject.